it's critically important that tall and narrow top heavy items such as a bookcase be properly anchored to the wall. I'll show you how it's done. Not only kids can climb on it and there's hundreds of pounds of books or hundreds of kilos of books on the uh, bookshelves but also when uh, people just lean against it or uh, pull books from it it shouldn't be rocking. Okay? So I'll show you how it's anchored. The proper way to do it is anchor it to the studs in the wall. If you just anchor it to drywall that's not gonna work really well. On this scale down model I have here a chunk of a wall that's typically uh, what we have here in uh, North American wood frame construction. There is this drywall on the outside that's got a paper face and it's got some uh, ground up uh, limestone in it and it's got a paper backing as well. It gets mudded, it gets painted and there you have it. You got face plates for uh, outlets and switches. This drywall attaches to this wood frame that typically has a top horizontal plate, a bottom horizontal plate and then uh, vertical studs go into the wall like so and uh, what you see is the edges of the studs only. It can be wider here and, and everything proportionately you know wider but typically it's three and a half inches or something like that. So you can see the wiring there, you can see vapor barrier. The vapor barrier normally goes on the underneath the dry drywall but uh, just to get you the idea there is insulation uh, to take care of. So if you put a screw in and uh, you're trying to anchor your shells and the screw only goes through the drywall there is no structural strength in this dry in this drywall okay that screw just rips right out and uh, let me just show you what I mean this is not a screw this is a screwdriver but you know that's about the holding strength of jip rock okay there you can see the screwdriver a bit there now we have a hole so anchoring anything to this to drywall is uh, extremely extremely unsafe okay you need to find the studs in the wall and the studs can be found fairly easily because that's where the drywall sheets got screwed on or nailed on. You can see there is a stud on this side here you can see the edge of it and on this side I got my screws there lined up. Same along the switch box. The switch box is mounted to wood so there is a stud and on the outside of it you can trace it and you can find it there. How this looks in real life is similar. Yeah, let me just put the camera down here. Maybe get rid of this cord. There. And there we have it. A couple of ways to go about finding studs is stud finder. That's approach one. Approach two, you can see the heads of screws popping through the drywall. That's also a a uh, pretty certain way to find studs. And the third one, my personal favorite, magnets. Because stud finders, stud finders work, but uh, they work on uh, emitting some uh, frequencies and uh, finding wood, uh, wood having higher density or different density than drywall. Uh, and this can, the instrument can uh, give you false readings all the time, and indeed they do. But the magnet, the strong magnet, goes on the nail head wherever the nails are. That's where your studs are. So there's one there, just for, just for show and tell. This is how it works with stud finders. There's the edge of the stud. You can mark it with a pencil there. There's the other edge of the stud. Mark it with another pencil. 
and there's nothing there. So it works pretty accurately in 80% of the cases, but but it doesn't really solve everything. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't substitute. It, it's not a substitute for thinking. Wall studs are laid out typically every 16 inches. Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 24. But if I go from these nail heads, exactly 16 inches in this direction, there, 16 inches, I better find a stud there. Which I did with the stud finder initially. There's my pencil mark there. There's my other pencil mark there. Those are not screw heads, those are just imperfections of paint. And uh, that's how an installed wall bracket there looks like. It's not the one that IKEA supplies. It's just one I uh, found somewhere in my toolbox kicking around. And uh, so that's one start location here. And another one will be at 32 inches thereabouts. So I'm gonna put one right about there. Let me just check it. We have 16 inches there, the zero there. 16 there and 32 needs to be moved over a little bit. There, let me just put the camera down here and check it again. Yep, pretty good. Okay, and then I have my drill, I got my screws here. And uh, when you go into a stud, you can feel it that it's got density and it's really hard to put the screws in. Well, not really hard, you know, with a power tool it's not that hard. But uh, there is a definite resistance that you feel when you're putting the screw in. So. There, and you can also see chips of chips of wood coming out. That's installed all right. There. Good. Now just rotate it a little bit. There. There, so that's that's in the stud all right. And uh, what I need to do is drill a small hole into the wood here and place a small screw in there using no power tools whatsoever, please, into the wood. <laughs> Lastly, I want to show you. So this is the screw the furniture comes pre-drilled with courtesy of IKEA it doesn't line up with the studs why would it be the manufacturers don't know where the studs are I don't know where the studs are I can only locate these studs uh, on on site after the furniture is installed there's another one there. it's hard to see but there's one there so that's what I mean that these furniture pieces need to be secured to the wall so if I yank on it it doesn't have any play on the other side where it's unsecured there's nothing up top there it's still rocking and it comes away from the wall so not a problem you just have to anchor it to the studs okay so that's how it's done fairly straightforward don't damage your walls or the furniture don't get hurt either I think my so it works pretty accurately in 80% of the cases, but but it doesn't really solve everything. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't substitute. It, it's not a substitute for thinking. Wall studs are laid out typically every 16 inches. Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 24. But if I go from these nail heads, exactly 16 inches in this direction there 16 inches I better find a stud there which I did with the stud finder initially there's my pencil mark there there's my other pencil mark there those are not screw heads those are just 
imperfections of paint and uh, that's how an installed wall bracket there looks like it's not the one that IKEA supplies it's just one I uh, found somewhere in my toolbox kicking around and uh, so that's one start location here and another one will be at 32 inches thereabouts so I'm gonna put one right about there let me just check it we have 16 inches there there's zero there 16 there and 32 needs to be moved over a little bit there let me just put the camera down here and check it again yep pretty good okay and then I have my drill I got my screws here and uh, when you go into a uh, stud you can feel it that it's got density and it's really hard to put the screws in well not really hard, you know with a power tool it's not that hard but uh, there is a definite resistance that you feel when you're putting the screw in so there and you can also see chips of chips of wood coming out that's installed all right there good now just rotate it a little bit there there so that's that's in the stud all right and uh, what I need to do is drill a small hole into the wood here and place a small screw in there using no power tools whatsoever please into the wood <laughs> lastly I want to show you so this is the screw the furniture comes pre-drilled with courtesy of I it's critically important that tall and narrow top heavy items such as a bookcase be properly anchored to the wall I'll show you how it's done not only kids can climb on it and there's hundreds of pounds of books or hundreds of kilos of books on the uh, bookshelves but also when uh, people just lean against it or uh, pull books from it it shouldn't be rocking okay so I'll show you how it's anchored the proper way to do it is anchor it to the studs in the wall if you just anchor it to drywall that's not gonna work really well on this scale down model I have here a chunk of a wall that's typically uh, what we have here in uh, North American wood frame construction there is this drywall on the outside that's got a paper face and it's got some uh, ground up uh, limestone in it and it's got a paper backing as well it gets mudded it gets painted and there you have it you get face plates for uh, outlets and switches this drywall attaches to this wood frame that typically has a top horizontal plate, a bottom horizontal plate and then uh, vertical studs go into the wall like so and uh, what you see is the edges of the studs only it can be wider here and, and everything proportionately you know wide and trace it and you can find it there how this looks in real life is pretty similar there, let me just put the camera down here maybe get rid of this cord there and there we have it a couple of ways to go about finding studs is stud finder that's approach one approach two you can see the heads of screws popping through the drywall that's also a, a 
pretty certain way to find studs. And the third one, my personal favorite, magnets. Because stud finders, stud finders work, but uh, they work on uh, emitting some uh, frequencies and uh, finding wood. Uh, wood having a higher density or different density than drywall uh, and this can the instrument can uh, give you false readings all the time and indeed they do but the magnet, the strong magnet goes on the nail head wherever the nails are that's where your studs are so there's one there just for just for show and tell this is how it works with stud finders there's the edge of the stud, you can mark it with a pencil there. There's the other edge of the stud, mark it with another pencil. And there's nothing there. But typically it's three and a half inches or something like that. So, you can see the wiring there, you can see vapor barrier. The vapor barrier normally goes on the underneath the drywall, but uh, just to get you the idea, there is insulation uh, to take care of. So. If you put a screw in and uh, you're trying to anchor your shells and the screw only goes through the drywall, there is no structural strength in this dry in this drywall, okay? That screw just rips right out. And uh, let me just show you what I mean. This is not a screw, this is a screwdriver, but you know, that's about the holding strength of jip rock okay there you can see the screwdriver bit there now we have a hole so anchoring anything to this to drywall is uh, extremely extremely unsafe okay you need to find the studs in the wall and the studs can be found fairly easily because that's where the drywall sheets got screwed on or nailed on you can see there is a stud on this side here you can see the edge of it and on this side I got my screws there lined up same along the switch box the switch box is mounted to wood so there is a stud and on the outside of it you can